Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. If you're Android, we recommend that you use Spotify or check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel. If you're Apple, use Apple Podcasts. Also check out Off the Floor. That's our new Discord server, $2.99 per month. That's where you communicate with us as well as fellow Heat fans all day long, 24-7. Get away from Twitter. Check it out. The link is right here in the description on the YouTube channel and the podcast feeds and pinned to the top of the Five Reasons Twitter page. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. We have good news. Prize Picks is back in the state of Florida. You can use the code 5 F I V E. Get that initial deposit matched up to $100 just in time for the playoffs. It's a new game called Arena. Set your lineup, play against other players. Check it out. PrizePicks.com. Use the code 5. And now, today's episode. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I got Brady Hawk. You can follow me at Brady Hawk 305. I got our guy Eternal Bass, our playback host. You can find him at Eternal Bass. And for I think it was like the sixth time we've had you here, T. Uh, Coach Tony. We got Tony Fiorentino here with us between games one and two of the first round series between the Heat and the Celtics. Tony, thanks for joining us. Sure. How's it going, Ethan? Brady. Good. Uh, before we get to the series, uh, I want to get to this at the very top here because uh, I'm thinking of sending my almost 10 year old to you uh, this summer. Yes. I mean, not on a, not on a permanent basis. I mean, I you know she's she's gonna live here, uh, but I'm thinking I'm thinking of sending her to you because you have some camps coming up. So tell yes. tell everybody about that. Well, we have seven weeks of camp over the summer. Uh, the first three weeks will start June 10th at Deerfield Beach Pickleball. Great facility with six full courts. It's our third year there. That's on June 10th. We go from 9 to uh, 9 a.m. to 3.30 every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, we play two five-on-five -five games every day. We have three-on-threes, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. You learn how to play basketball and you learn how to, when you know how to play three-on-three. -three. Then we have shooting contests Tuesday and Thursday. Michael Lissack in the PR department does a great job of always getting us either a player or a legend. As a guest speaker, that every kid takes a picture with them, gets an autograph picture, uh, is able to ask them questions, things of that nature. And um, we just have a great time. And we teach a lot of life skills as well. I give out a quote every day. Could be anybody from Aristotle or Dwayne Wade. I'm still looking for one from you, but I'll, I'll keep looking. I, I don't I don't think it's coming. And if it came from me, my daughter wouldn't listen to it. Uh, so I, I you know, I think we should well, probably we'll stay away from we'll that. Brady's quotes. I, I, I think Brady's quotes would be better. I mean, if, <laughs> if she starts quoting Aristotle to me here in the kitchen, I'm telling you, uh, she's yeah, that's not going to work out very well. Uh, but anyway, check out the camps. We're going to talk about it more before the end of the show. And I'm serious. I'm sorry. She, she wants to go. I asked her and she's well, like, the I'm, other I'm two totally good. That month in June is going to be at Cooper City High School. OK. Right. And then we take a break for Fourth of July. And then we have four straight weeks again at we're doing something different this summer. We're going to have heat camp, junior heat camp at two different sites in the same week. So for okay. four straight weeks, starting after the Fourth of July week, we're going to have four weeks, straight weeks at Cooper City High School. And the same weeks are going to be at Slam High School. Okay. And so people in Dade, you know, the kids in Dade, can, you don't have to travel up there. And then the kids up there don't have to come down to Dade. So. We were able to accommodate many kids that way. We appreciate you taking care of Broward County for us. Uh, Slam, by the way, for those who don't know, is right near Marlins Park. It's very close yes. to it uh, in, in the little Havana area. Cooper City, thank you. That's close enough for me. Actually, Brady could go, too. He could, Brady could be an instructor uh, and be drawing plays. Uh, he lives out. Did you know Sean Rochester? He's been on with you before. Sean Rochester from Five Reasons Sports sure. Network. Was, he, was a, uh, he was a camper with you uh, camper way back when. Many years ago at South Broward High School. So look and at now that. Now he's an established coach in the South, right? That he is an established coach, and and also yeah, uh, yeah and, and he appears on podcasts with us. I don't know which is better. Uh, so Tony, where can people find out about all this? Juniorheat.com. All the information's on there. It uh, tells you how you can register, um, what it costs, the, the weeks, all of that stuff. And um, uh, Julian Sanchez and and Santi Echeverria do a great job of organizing the camps from behind the scenes and. Um, they're just two great guys to work with. And the whole thing is overseen by Jeff Craney. Awesome stuff. All right. So we'll talk about it more um, as we go forward. Uh, we're going to talk basketball here, but I, I want to start with this because uh, you uh, you get passionate on uh, on Twitter sometimes. Um, and and I, I get it. Um, and and there have been a few things. We talked about this on our last couple podcasts that 
have, uh, I guess, been irritating about the way that I, I think that Miami fans and also uh, the Miami organization is perceived outside of South Florida. Um, you, I, I know we the Will Bond stuff, uh, the Kendrick Perkins stuff, the Heat fans not arriving on time. Do you want to elaborate on what you said on Twitter? I think Heat fans appreciate that you kind of – because I look at the comments under your comments, and go Coach Tony and all the rest of this. Do you want to stick up for Heat fans against the Northeast bias NBA media? And I know you're a Mount Vernon guy. I know you're about Northeast initially, or originally and all that. But do you want to stick up for them here? We're going to give you the platform. Well, just, not to be specific, but just in general, there's a, there's a perception, I believe, nationally, that our fans are not into our team. And I, that's just wrong. Anybody that's been to our games knows that the Heat fans are just some, I think – and, I, and, and I'm not saying this to be biased, and I'm not saying this from uh, lack of awareness. I've been to every arena in the NBA, practically every arena. There's some new ones now since I'm not on the air anymore. But I know what the fan base in every city is. And there's some great fans in the NBA, and they're great fans in Miami. And I don't like it when people put down our fans when they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And I think that to have the perception, you know, I, they always go back to game six in 2013 when Ray Allen made the shot, maybe a thousand fans, whatever it was, left the arena prematurely. Right. So you're going to you're going to you're going to lambast all of Heat fans because of some fans that left early. Yeah, if, if, if a thousand left, there are only 19,000 left in the arena. OK. And all the all the loyal Heat fans that we've had both nationally and, and internationally. I used to get so many texts and uh, emails from people from around the world after we went to the finals for four straight years. Those fans are still fans. They understand we have one of the best uh, organizations in pro sports and in the NBA. And I don't like it when people put down our fans. Now, do, they, do some of them arrive late to games? Yeah. But the pro part of the problem is that in South Florida, you don't have the, the uh, public transportation that you okay. can take to get to the games that some other cities have. That the, the traffic, there's a problem here. Not to make excuses, those are the realities of what you're dealing with here. And so, if the fans are there when it counts, and and what I also like about our fans that you don't get in some other arenas when our team's not playing well, they don't boo them like some fans. I don't know. I never understood that concept. Why hometown fans would boo their team when they're not playing well? You think that's going to get them to play better? Our fans seem to get behind them and start saying, "Let's go Heat." Get, so I really respect that from our fans, and I just feel there are times when I have to stick up for them. Well, I know the fans appreciate it. Uh, Brady and I have are on a text string, and it's typically at about three or four o'clock. We're like, "What time are you leaving?" Because both of us live in Broward. yeah, right. Because <laughs> like, if you don't right. leave, by, if you don't leave by four o'clock, uh, you know it's uh, yeah, that's yeah, some you, problems. Yep. You, you you've got some serious serious problems. Uh, I want to let Eternal jump in here with you though on on this topic because uh, Eternal doesn't live down here now, but has followed the team for a long time. Uh, he's in the Memphis area. Uh, you have any thoughts on this for Tony? Yeah, I, I just think he made a great point. I know you guys, a lot of the South Florida people, first and foremost, it is a great honor and pleasure to finally meet you, Coach. I've been a fan uh -huh. for one of the, a long time. Um, I Thank always you. thought that you have gave a lot of X's and O's and a lot of knowledge to the fans and to the general fan base of the NBA. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Um, I think you guys have always touched on it, uh, whether on Twitter or on podcast, just how unique where the arena is in South Florida versus the other NBA arenas or even other sports arenas around the country, where it's just not really easy to get um, to the arena. And so I think Tony, uh, Coach made a great point as far as taking up for the fans, because I do think Miami does get very unfair treatment compared to the rest of the sports um, fandom out there uh coach <clears throat> what has been something that you have enjoyed so far about this Miami Heat season well you know one thing you have to do in sports is that same thing in life is that there's going to be uh adversarial situations that you have to overcome nothing's going to be peachy cream all the time and coach Spolstra you know you get you get the leadership from from the Arisons and Pat Riley but when the nuts and bolts of the whole thing come from Coach Spolstry, such such a positive uh, influence on the team that he they're always looking for something that's positive out of it. 
successful people never lose. They either win or they learn. All right? That's a phrase that a lot of people have used. And I use it in the camp with the kids. And I think sometimes um, people, uh, there are teams where they may lose a game or two. And then all of a sudden they get in, they go in the dumps. But the Heat seem to react after they have a tough game. They seem to react when they get to a tough situation. And that all has to do with Coach Spolstra. And one of the examples I use at camp now is that last year, when we talk about getting through adversity, how would you like it if you're the Miami Heat? Nobody outside of Miami gave you any shot at all of making the NBA Finals last year. And so they win, three, they win two series in a row. They're 3-0 and on the Celtics. It goes to 3-3. They're six seconds away from getting to the NBA Finals, which nobody predicted. And Derek White taps the ball in at the buzzer and you lose. Now you got to go to Boston, a tough place to play, and win game seven. Well, after the game, you got an indication of the attitude that the Heat had with Spolstra, Eric Spolstra, when they said to him, Coach, how do you approach this game seven? He goes, let's play right now. Let's play right now. He had an indignant attitude towards this whole thing. The Heat could not wait to get to Boston. They're not going up there with their tail between their legs. They knew they were going to go in there and win. Now, did it help that Tatum got hurt in the first play? Yeah, but I think the Heat would have won the game anyway. The way they were mentally prepared, the way they shot the ball. So what I'm saying is uh, how you handle adversity is going to prove a lot to yourself. And the Heat are one of the best at handling it well and then trying to figure out how to be positive and come out ahead the next time. Now, they got a big chore ahead of them for tomorrow night, for Wednesday night, to to win this game against Boston and tie this series. It's a monumental task because we know how good Boston is, but you just get a feeling from the past experience that the Heat are going to find a way to be in that game. And if you're in the game at the end, you got a chance to win it. Yeah. I want to follow on that. I'm going to let Brady uh, uh, get in on here as well. I mean, look, they fell behind 14, nothing and they did fight. They fought to get back in it. And then it kind of got away uh, in the third quarter. And, and the one thing I want to ask you, when you're going against a team that uh, Boston made more threes than twos <laughs> in that game, Tony, like they, I mean, they, you know, they, they had eight guys play for them and of the eight, all of them except Tatum made at least two, two, two threes. And all of them except Tatum shot at least 40% from three. Um, it, this was when you were an assistant, I mean, this was the, the elite teams were not as reliant on the three as the teams are now this is kind of a you know this is golden state and then and we saw a little with san antonio towards the end of kind of their run how do you counter a team that is just so proficient from three because the idea is okay let them eventually it'll there'll be regression of the mean and they'll take but there doesn't seem to be a lot of regression with this team well they'll what what happens after a game like that any game in the playoffs the coaches will sit around and they'll look at the tapes and they'll see They'll stop it. They'll look at different things they want to look at. They'll look at the analytics. They'll look at the stats. And they'll come up with a game plan that's different than game one. And we know that in a seven-game series that uh, when one team loses, they're going to come up with a different strategy for the next game. Then it's up to the opponent to then have their uh, adjustment to your adjustment. And so uh, Eric Spolster and his staff have, have, have a history of doing really well in coming back and making decisions after things don't work well. I remember when Westbrook had 40 something points against us in the mm -hmm. 2012 uh, championship series. And the next game, he didn't play well. And then Rajon Rondo had a big game. Now you're dealing with a lot of players here uh, the other night that played well. So it creates a bigger problem than one person or two people. But you got to know that Eric Spolstra and his staff will come up with a different game plan. You don't expect Boston to make 20-something threes again on Wednesday night. You, you, you know that the Heat have to shoot better from their three-point line because Boston's defense is clogging the middle and making them take shots from the perimeter. So the, you know so one of the ways you offset that is that you do a good job defensively and you get out in the open court and you get down the floor before they can set up. That's one way to counter that. And so – um, the Heat are, are going to have a different strategy and, and we'll see if it works. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to this game tomorrow night because I, I love it when nobody gives the Heat a chance to do something. That's when they usually shine. Brady, Coach, you, you mentioned, you know, getting stops and getting out to the open floor. 
Uh, you look at this roster right now without Jimmy. I mean, they, they're leaning on their young guys, it seems. Like, that that's kind of where they're at, it seems like, in terms of game plan. So I just wanted to get your your take on Jaime Hawkins and Nikola Jovic. Because you talk about getting out to the open floor. Those are your two options. Those are your guys, it feels like, that could run pace, that could set you up in your offense. And it feels like they have to lean on those guys right now. So just w- what have you thought of them and how much do you feel like, as crazy as it sounds in a playoff series, leaning on your 20-year-old and your rookie, how much do they have to lean on those guys right now to just play that style? Well, you know, that's a good point, Brady. I think uh, one of the positives of the game was the play of Jaime. I think that uh, uh, Nico grew up in that game, one game. It's only one game, but that experience of playing in that atmosphere and knowing that, and Jaime mentioned how the pressure of the game is a lot. You could feel it right before the game starts. It's a lot different than a regular season game. Well, you have to experience that. Obviously, you can't learn that unless you experience it. So those two guys now have that game under their belt. You love the way DeLon Wright played. He shows no fear, right? And one of the things that Coach Spolster has done with his bigs throughout his coaching career, which may have changed things in the NBA a little bit, looking at bigs, is that he has always encouraged them to rebound and push the ball up the floor, right? That, that didn't exist a generation ago, maybe 10 years ago. People didn't do that. The bigs would always out with the ball. You know, I was a high school coach. Get the ball to a guard and run down the floor, obviously. So I think that's part of the part of it where you get your bigs to push the ball up the floor, both Bam and both Nico and the guys that can just get the rebound and go not having Jimmy Hurts because he's a two way player. Obviously, you got you don't have a defender at the other end that can you can put on their best player. So that's part of what they have to figure out defensively, not only the system of maybe closing out better on the threes and uh, uh, the double teams and what you have to do out of that. See, what, what's important when you double team a player is you got to make sure they don't make that direct pass out of it. You want a little mm. bit of a lob pass. And the other night, it seemed like Boston was just passing the ball so quickly that he couldn't get to those threes. So that's maybe something else they work on. If they're going to double team, really squeeze it so that the offensive player can't make that direct pass. And it gives the, the rotating player time and the defense to rotate to where the good shots are. And then be aware of the long rebounds. The, the hardest thing to defend with three-point shooters is the long rebound where they kick it out. You saw the Nick game yesterday, how the guy won the mm-hmm. game, but it was mm-hmm. off an offensive rebound. And so that that's where you have to maybe you – know, you get you got to shore up the defensive boards and make sure they only get, you know, lessen their opportunities of making those threes. All right, we're going to come right back here with Tony. I'm going to let Eternal uh, jump in here. I do want to introduce another sponsor of the Five Reasons Sports Network. We're excited to be working with Autograph, the app where your fandom lives. The app gives diehard fans like you access to all the best sports content, fan challenges, and exclusive rewards like discounted tickets to the NBA playoffs, exclusive merchandise, and more. You can unlock rewards like these just for doing the things you already do as a Miami Heat fan, like listening to Five on the Floor, following the news on the Heat, and sharing your favorite content. Download the free Autograph app in the App Store or the Google Play Store today and use the referral code FIVE. That's F-I-V-E. We'll see you at the game. And actually, they just dropped uh, a ticket discount for game three. So check it out. I think you can get uh, Heat uh, Celtics game three tickets for under 25 bucks. So check it out on the Autograph app uh, and go in there today. Or turn I'll let you jump in here. Coach, we, we saw Jimmy Butler put on a heroic performance, get hurt in the first quarter against Philly last uh, Tuesday, um, and then proceeded to play 30 minutes on a sprained MCL um 13 points three rebounds um really really you know gut out performance and then it's announced that he's going to miss several weeks we saw how Miami came out spirited against the Bulls on Friday is that something that you can see galvanizing the team even though they lost on on Sunday is it something that you can see kind of putting that extra push in the team um as they head towards home well there's no doubt you know uh when I was on Coach Riley's staff for four years, Coach was always very good at inspirational things that he would tell them, real situations that he would bring up that would inspire the guys to play a little bit harder, a little bit better. I think this is one of them where your best player tried to gut it out against Philadelphia, and he'd almost pulled it off with their best guy, you know, limping up the floor, literally not being able to go to him down the stretch, relying on other guys, and they respect that. And, and the rallying cry could be, let's do this for Jimmy. Let's try to, let's try to get, extend this series 
then maybe he'll be back by the end of the series. You don't know that. It probably is not going to happen, but you don't know that. And so you, 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 you dig a little deeper and you try a little harder. And what it does is makes you concentrate more and have more confidence in each other because they also have the experience of playing without him uh, for 22 games this year. And they had a pretty good record when he didn't play. So they have that experience to fall back on. It's not like, like, like uh, uh, they don't have that experience of playing without him. What kind of a difference do you think Terry will make if he comes back? Because it's one thing to be missing Jimmy, but it also Duncan is not 100%. It's pretty obvious, you know, since coming back. But, I mean, if they're able to get Rozier back at some point in this series, how, how does he change the trajectory of it? Well, that's part of what we were just talking about. You want to get the ball up the floor as quickly as possible before they can set up their defense. They are a really good def- defensive team. And Rozier is the guy that can do that. He's one of the quickest guys in the league with the ball going baseline to baseline. And if he can get you into your offense quickly, then you may get more of those open threes that the Heat are talking about that they need to take a little more. Maybe they were a little hesitant the other day. So uh, obviously he's very important. So maybe by um, maybe who knows when, when he's, when he can, when he's back, if he's back, then that will be the importance of him getting the ball up the floor. And you also know he's a dogged defender. He can get after people. And, and maybe you can play more one-on-one defensively than you have to with trapping some of the guys. Coach, I want to ask you about another narrative because you, you touched on the Heat fan thing. It, it was kind of been out there for a little bit, but now the new one seems to be um, about the play with Kayla Martin where, where he kind of – Tatum kind of took a, took a tough fall at the end of that game. And it, I know it was put out there by, by Scalabrini – um, that it was a dirty play and it was like putting a hit out on a player um, as Caleb is the farthest from a dirty player, furthest from a dirty player. And I know he just said something again this morning where he said like he would never try to do that. And if it was roles were reversed, it probably weren't be, even be discussing this play. Um, but what do you think about the rap that I guess that, that Miami, you know, they, they try to figure out heat culture or label it. Uh, when Miami talks about getting into the mud or making it ugly or, or trying to make it this disgusting game, it doesn't mean taking out opposing players, but making the game into an 84 to 82 game. Like there's just, what do you, what is your take on that, that whole narrative? Well, I hope he's smart enough that he did that to try to inspire the Celtics to keep playing hard and go against, you know, the, 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 uh, the physical play of the Miami heat, because that is not a very smart statement to make. Anybody that knows coach Spolster knows the Miami heat. They just play the right way. Everyone, you get a lot of kudos from everybody, even from other coaches from other sports the way they admire the way the Heat play. Um, it was an unfortunate play. Uh, Caleb was going for the rebound. He, he knocked it. He knocked the best player, happened to be the best player, you know, on the court down. Okay. One of the MVP candidate. Um, I think he's just saying that maybe to work up the fan base. I hope that's the reason because it's not a very smart thing to say. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I actually had more choice words than that. Uh, yesterday. I, the idea that Eric Spolstra after 15 years as a head coach, with no history of anything like that would call a timeout to order a code red to take out a player. He's going to be coaching in the Olympics uh, is just insane. And I, it Especially just, it, when it, you challenged, he challenged, it was for a challenge. He, he challenged it. Right. Exactly. That's what the timeout was for. It's just, and it's, Caleb got pushed. I mean, it was, and, well, well <laughs> that, 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 it. <laughs> that part of it, that it's, it's almost like saying, okay, so that Spo actually went to drew holiday and said, Hey, I'm coaching on the Olympic team, so go take out uh, the best player on your team. It just it, it it just literally makes no sense, but it gets into kind of what we talk about, uh, you know, with the media hysterics at this point, and it's it's uh, it's good copy on it. I'm gonna go to Eternal here uh, in a second, and and uh, again, we're gonna mention again uh, JuniorHeat.com. Uh, make sure that you check it out uh, for. Uh, your camps this summer all over the place. I'm probably going to see Tony at Cooper City uh, at some point here. Here, just give give people an example before Eternal jumps in here. Some of the some of the uh, guest speakers that you've had at the camps in recent years. Well, we've had a lot of the Heat players. Obviously, Adonis Haslam probably has the record for most of all the years. <laughs> I'm not he's surprised. always got a different. <laughs> he's always got a different uh, message, and you know, we had. I was surprised at how big and how strong uh, Jaime was when we had him at camp at Slam at the end of the summer. We've had Jay Rich, Alonzo Mourning makes his uh, one, one, one appearance. Glenn Rice works the camp, one of the great shooters in the history of the NBA. And just so you guys know, maybe you've seen this because I, I put this out there. 
I can't believe he's not in the in the uh, college basketball Hall of Fame. Good point. He still has a couple of records from the 1989 Finals, um, where he has the most points, most whatever it is. Just a great guy, and he belongs in the at least the college basketball Hall of Fame. He worked every day at the camp last year. We had seven mm -hmm. weeks of camp. He was there every day, and so guys like this. Um, and, 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 and we never know which Heat player is going to be there because we don't know who's available until Michael Lissack can get somebody to come. And we try to get somebody different. If they've been to the Cooper mm. City camp, then we try to get someone different that was there from there last year because we've got kids that want to see different guys. And it, it's just and you know what the kids learn? Because I always talk about Heat culture in camp. Uh, um, one of the things I always mention on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, when, every day, uh, make your bed when you get up in the morning. And the responsibility of making the bed. And one of the greatest things that happened, the greatest comments I got last year, the best comments I got was the last week of the summer on a Wednesday morning, a mom comes to me and says, you know, not only did my eight-year-old son make his bed, but he showed his six-year-old brother how to make it. I mean, what gets better than that? Come on. Tony, I'm definitely sending my daughter because uh, <laughs> the, the, the bed has not been made here in about two years. Uh, so <laughs> don't 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 take any back talk on that. That's it. We just make, make, make your bed uh, and take the socks off the floor, please. That That's Damn that's all God. I'm asking for. You don't have to teach her how to shoot a three or, you know, play in the post. Just make the bed, <laughs> take the socks off the floor. Uh, listen turtle, to your dad. <laughs> well, she literally says at the end of this podcast, don't listen to me. Uh, a turtle, jump in here coach we saw Jaime Hawkins come out like a cannonball to start the season um winning multiple uh rookie of the months um we've seen Nico coming off of the FIBA World Cup kind of playing but not really playing but also um later in the year establishing himself as a starter can you talk about you know just how it, what you've seen from the the young guys this season and how excited you are about them well, one of the things I mentioned at camp about Jaime was he was making a lot of statements about, I know how to play. I've, I've come from a very good basketball program. He's been taught very well by his college coach. He was in very high pressure situations. And he's a little older than most guys that come out of college. He was 22 when he came out. He said, I'm ready. And I said to him, I wanted to see if you were going to back up those words. And he did it in the, in the, uh, in the summer camp. You saw some of the game. He only played a few games because he got hurt a little bit. But then he backed it up when the season started. And I also told some of my friends that I thought that when, when Jaime was playing great at the beginning, part of it was because he was given the opportunity to because we had a lot of injuries. And he had to be a go-to guy, and he was, he was producing. Then when some of the guys came back, he wasn't that option, and he, uh, second or third, uh, you know, maybe first or second option. He was second, third, he was third or fourth. And so he didn't get as many touches as he had before. He didn't have any rhythm in his shot. So you expected his production to go down. And then later, and then, then as we got through all of that, now you see how he's playing in the most you know, crucial time of the year, the, the, uh, playing to get into the playoffs. And now in the playoffs, he's taking his game to an, the level that he had earlier in the year. And Nico, I, I was surprised about how his development happened so quickly. I didn't think this year would be the year that he would be contributing as much as he has. I thought it'd be another you know, after these two years under his belt, next year would be the year where he would really. But I think Coach Spolster has found the niche for Nico being that other big alongside Bam. And especially I was when I was watching Nico uh, shoot in practice and, and shooting before the game, he was making a lot of his threes earlier in the year. But when he got into the game, he was kind of rushing a little bit. He was shooting it just a little differently. He didn't have the follow through that you should have. Now he's doing that. He's learned, he's learned through experience and through the, the uh, I, I mentioned for years when I was on the air with Eric that uh, we have one of the, uh, arguably the best coaching staff and the uh, teaching staff in the NBA. I didn't want to insult anybody. I thought we had the best teaching staff. And the fact that our guys get so much better and these guys that they never were drafted and they come in and they, 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 they establish themselves and become stars in the league. Obviously, we have a great teaching staff. So he has picked up on that. He's been receptive to it. And, you know, you got to give Coach Riley a lot of credit and his uh, scouting staff. Not only do they bring in players that have a chance to become better, but they have that, that demeanor and that attitude that they want to be better and they're going to work hard. There are players, some players in the NBA that don't want to work so hard to improve. They just want to get by on their skills. So you pull all that together and you got two young players that, that are contributing to a winning season for the Heat and you expect bigger things of them come in the future. 
the thing I've been most impressed with with Jovic uh, is that he was frustrated early in the year, but instead of complaining about it, he worked through it. And I and so uh, we've seen that he is always the guy who's smiling. His teammates seem to really like him. And I, I just I mean I know what Eternal thinks, and we all think he's got a huge, huge upside for this team. All right, Tony, we appreciate it. Thank you for joining us again. Check it out, JuniorHeat.com. Uh, where again you'll learn everything from Aristotle to Haslam is has Haslamisms. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you get. Well, if you can get UD off his podcast, that's the thing. Like he's just a podcaster now. That's it. He's a media guy. Like I, 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 well, why, I mean, it's easy, right? We just sit here and talk. <laughs> UD was always good at that. Uh, so, so we're gonna try to get him on here as well. But Tony, we really appreciate you taking the time. I know Heat fans always appreciate hearing from you. And uh, let's see if they can make this thing a series. Well, Ethan, keep up the good work. Brady, keep up the good work. And I appreciate the kind words from everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Ciao.